Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Special Guest of Honor on these occasions is represented by the Executive Governor of Borno State, His Excellency Professor Babagana Umara Zulu. Please I'd like us to applaud him very quickly just as we get these events underway. Thank you very much, Andy. His Excellency Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, ably represented by Your Excellency Professor Babaga Nazulum, CUN, Governor of Borno State. The distinguished chairman of this occasion, Your Eminence, Muhammadu Sahaj Abubakar, the third MNI, CFR, Sultan of Sokoto, and President General, Nigeria Council for Islamic Affairs. The guest of honor, the special guest of honor, Senator Ayim Pius Ayim, GCON, former president of the Senate and former secretary to the government of the Federation. PDP National Chairman, Your Excellency, Senator Dr. Yocha Ayim, Minority Leader of the Senate, Distinguished Senator Philip Aduda, very distinguished senators and members of the House of Representatives here present. Your Excellencies, Executive Governors of various states that are here, and I did run quickly with a list that I have. Uh, Executive Governors from Biosta State, from Delta State, from Sokoto State, from Kirby State. Your Excellencies all, I welcome you. Former Governors from Kwara State, Kogi State, Adamawa State, Sokoto State, Niger State, Edo State, and Delta State, I also welcome all of you very much. Your Excellency, Abubakar Kolasara KCON, President of the 8th Senate, and your very distinguished wife, Her Excellency Tui Saraki, Conveners of this event, Bahá'u'lláh of the Saraki Dynasty, you're also welcome. From the far east of our continent, we brought in our guest speaker that has made a mark for himself in all that he does. And um, in choosing my words to uh, welcome you warmly, I'll say Asante for being here, our uh, special guest lecturer, Professor Patrick Lumumba, who is the, well, we all know him as the motivational speaker and past electoral umpire of Kenya. You're welcome. <laughs> Our royal father of the day, ably represented by the Balogu Gambari of Iloria and Haji Muhammad Ajibayo, you're also welcome. Um, I'd like also to welcome especially my sister, Senator Kwemisola Rukayat Saraiki, Honorable Minister of State, Mines and Steel Development, and of course all members of the Federal Executive Council here who have come with you to witness this special day. Your Excellencies, Heads of Diplomatic Missions in Nigeria, Heads of Departments and Agencies of the Federal and State Departments, my Lords, spiritual and temporal, chieftains of political parties here present, captains of industry here present, and the very many pseudo-children of late Pa Senator Waziri Dr. Abubakar Ulushala Saraki. Members of the distinguished and vibrant Nigerian media very, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Today is very, very special. And I just have a little reminder here for us. And those are my thoughts. Leadership and legacy is mutually inclusive. Wherever good leadership is found, the people are quick to identify with it, especially if it embodies what the lead, need, and want, and hold very dear. For us in Kwara State and indeed transcending Kwara, Nigeria, and I'm, I dare to say Africa, we have a treasurable memories of our dear departed father, 
that he touched lives is an understatement. He transformed the lives and generations' livelihood. He made monumental impact that 10 years on, he remains alive. How many of us can boast the exemplary magnitude of Dr. Ushala Sarahi's social impact? Posterity is a great judge because we, as we remember these illustrious patriots, we should emulate the facts that the many facets of his gloriously impacted life, this great son of Africa. Permit me to welcome all of us to this memorable and conscious jogging event as we remember this Colossus who can never die for his unmatched futuristic impact on our nation. If you stand for something and live for something, you will surely be remembered for something. Such is the true, true case of a pillar of grassroots politics in Nigeria, Dr. Abubakar Ulushala Sarahi. I welcome all of us and hope that this will impact greatly on leadership and all that it holds. And before we do start, can I please ask very, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, that we stand in one minute of silence in remembrance of a man who has continued to live even in death. Please we now remember him as we, we now observe a one minute silence for the repose of his soul. May the soul of the dear departed rest in perfect peace. Please be seated. When I got this invitation to be the anchor for this memorable occasion, I was challenged. Challenged with leadership. Challenged with how to address everyone here. But I have been watching, and the Baudi language for me shows that leadership has a way of attracting both the opposites and the negative and making it into one. So, for those of us who are privileged to be here today, can you please just say something nice to the person next to you? Uh, in remembrance of the senator that had no divide. He had no divide. And that's what I've been seeing since we got started. Everyone here is welcome. I can see the smiles resonating. This is the Nigeria that we want. The Nigeria that has no barrier, where bridges are built to continue to live and aim for better Nigeria. Andy will be here with me, and we hope that together we'll navigate and have such impact that it will send the message of true leadership as we carry on. He was the eighth Senate president, president of the eighth Senate. He was my governor for two terms. Sometimes I wonder how best to describe this man. But I'll describe him as the son of a leader who worked also to wear the shoes of his father and is continuing to do that. Your Excellency is all very, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome with me the man who is um, trying by every day wearing the shoes of the Waziri. He used to be the Waziri of the Lorry. Welcome with me, His Excellency, Dr. Abubakar Okola Saraki, C O N, who will welcome all of us here with this opening address. His Excellency. Like him, Kakamanta. Special guest of honor. 
President Mohamed Dubai, if you represented by the executive of a new state, the Zulu, the chairman of the Kishi, his eminence, Sultan Sokto, other side of Ahmed III, then you have Kano, the Wai Wai, then you have Ningi, executive governors here present, governor of Delta State, my board, governor of Bielsa State, your brother governor of Sokto State, governor of Kebi State, chairman of our new party, so, I hear to hire you. Honorable ministers here present, I recognize you all. Members of the National Assembly, minority leaders, and other members of leadership in the House and in the Senate. Former governors here present. The Royal Father of the Day, Emil Biloni, presented by Baloo Kiyamari. My dear wife, my siblings, Gary, the Honorable Minister, Laulu, I talk with you, I recognize you all. All of the children of Uluye, which I would not like to call you guests, because I know your own children of Uluye. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of our mother, Chief Lord of the Supreme who is unavailably absent here, but I can assure you she's keenly following this event on television. My siblings and all associates of our late father who organized this lecture, I want to warmly welcome all of you here present, who gathered this hall to honor Dr. Oluyi Abubakar Olusholosaki, who is in the way. May Allah continue to retain you in the place of our general freedom. Amen. We are happy that on the Monday, very important day for state, corporate, and personal businesses. We've all kept this day aside to be here, left our offices and homes to be with us. We appreciate it and we don't take it for granted. The choice of the day is suspicious, the 10th anniversary of our late father of two weeks ago. And as we are done for many years since his demise, we attend a prayer session now, Hukta in Lorraine, where Islamic scholars lecture us of his life and enjoy those of us left behind to borrow examples from his activities, philosophy, goals, and aspirations. Part of the anniversary of this time celebration was a medical outreach sponsored by a few of the younger associates. In addition, the family and associates also believe that it is good as part of the celebration of his life and times, we should create a national platform to address one of the issues that our late father was passionate about as a way of reawakening national consciousness on it and seeking to achieve improvement in the national interest. We know that in his lifetime, any matter that concerned any of Uluwe's numerous holders really touched him with so much personal passionate and genuine His followers were his life. They formed the core of his politics and well-being. He believed they should have a say in his political decisions and he never took any action without consulting or briefing them. He reason that he spent a huge to give scholarship awards to children of many of his supporters Many doesn't even know and help many to set up their businesses across the country. We have chosen the leadership and followership debate as a way of revisiting responsible yeah, sure. and responsive as well as taking strong that can guide and guard the teachers, the leaders. We know that it is an electionary period as we have in our country today. Many of our We do not want any of the events in the Louis Memorial Anniversary to spill into December. Those who need to hold the 
if my father was around, it would be so far. It is for that reason that we decided to ensure many of us here are familiar with him. At the end of the day, many more will appreciate the point from which he takes off and all the issues he addresses. Professor Patrick, you are welcome to this gathering. Ladies and gentlemen, we also have a chairman who is a father to who was a young army officer in the Lorry, and met and later with that great father, sorted and sought to his eminence, and I decided to come that. It's not just a believer in the unity of our country, and today we remain a symbol of aspiration for a stronger and better Nigeria. These are the goals our father strongly believe in. We also have a dignified presence. But I would like to just say one thing from my own little experience, whether it's a lecture, advice, or my observation. As we all journey through this life, some of us, and I think I cannot lecture on leadership and followership, but I can lecture that let us continue to do good because we will reap it. Because we, the children of the we are reaping what he has done in this world. Once again, I thank you. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and I think we can do better with that round of applause for the President of the 8th Senate. Thank you so very much, sir. Permit me to run through these quick recognitions, Your Excellency, because of time. I recognize the presence, Your Excellency, Senator. Mohamed Adamwale, our Chairman of the Senate Committee on Works, former Governor of Kebbi State. We welcome the Honorable Minister of State Power, Prince J.D. Agba. We recognize the presence of Mr. Tunde Ayeni, Obam Victor Atta, Your Excellency, former Governor of Akwai Gum State. We also recognize the presence of the Royal Highness of Haji Amiru Adumayoro, the Emir of Kano, the Deputy Week of the Senate, Distinguished Senator Dr. Ali Yusabi Abdullahi. We welcome you, and I must also place a record. The chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum is leading and representing all the governors here, much as many of them are here. Um, talking about the Arjun Nobu and Amelu Mazin in Tampa, and the Vice Chairman, and uh, Senator Abakar, and Tiku Babudu. Let's give all of them a resounding applause, please. Your Excellencies, this event is art because the man that we are celebrating here with here must be is a man, Senator Abakar Dr. Olushana Seraki, a great man, a bridge builder, a philanthropist, an institute, um, an astute politician, a consummate administrator, and a scholar of, a uh, proud scholar of the Islamic faith, a political lion and juggernaut, as he's called, a leader, an emperor. He's a man who's called him a political enigma, the man who single handedly emancipated the Quara people. He was a man, a man emancipator. And William Shakespeare says, and I quote, Some are born great, some achieve greatness, while some have greatness been thrusted in them. This actually speaks to the man that we're celebrating here today. Moving on very quickly, with your kind permission, let me recognize just before I move on the former governor of Katsina State, Barista Sheru Shema. Your Excellency, welcome, sir. Thank you very much. I'm moving on very quickly at this juncture. Standing by the existing protocol, our special guest of honor, it is my honor and privilege to invite the distinguished chairman of this occasion, His Eminence, Al Haji Mohammed Sahad Abakar, CFR, MNI, the Sultan of Sokoto, for his remarks. Can we give him a resounding applause as he makes his way to the group? the distinguished chairman of the occasion, sir. I was delighted that she honored the gym. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. All what you call the view of that, but I must recognize the president Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, very happily presented by the Governor of 
for those things. Other distinguished leaders, especially the governors, past and present, but I must recognize my two governors here, the governor of Sokoto State and the Montawali of Sokoto, and the former governor of Sokoto State, Gargon Sokoto, and then other governors, other distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I greet you all in the best form of greeting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. At this morning, we are all gathered for one purpose Nigeria. This morning, we are gathered also to celebrate on that person who is or who he was. I can say who he is because people die but their actions, good actions still remain with them because people still recognize what they have done. We are here to listen to the lecture by another distinguished approach by former Senate President, former Governor of Guadalajara State, Dr. Bukola Zlaji, to take part in this program today. I'm only told yesterday I'm supposed to be the chairman of this program. And I asked him, what am I going to do as chairman? It's only to sit on a chair and listen to what people are going to talk. But he said, I must speak. We are so interested in what happens in our country. But this is a very serious period where we have politics dominating the space. And we are talking about leadership and followership by by Dr. Saraki. As a young officer in the Nigerian Army, very young officer. I was in the Lauren at Saudi Barracks. And that's the period I came to know Oloye. I wasn't close to him because at his high position, retired but not tired. And I believe the topic so chosen by the guest speaker or by the organizers is so apt. Just on Saturday, Saturday, past Saturday, I was in my degree at the Balea All the Boys Association annual lecture. I was the guest lecturer. And the topic I spoke about was challenges of leadership and governance in Nigeria. That was the Saturday, that was the last Saturday that was what I spoke about. And I brought some copies that I'll speak to the guests here. And the governor was there, the governor was from North State, and he spoke a lot about what I said. Now we have another lecturer, the distinguished African, who speaks on leadership and followership. This is just coincidence, the two lectures coming at this time. But it's important because we are into political activities and we are looking for leaders to steer the So we must look at who a leader should be, what a leader should not be, what we should do as followers to ensure we have a good leader. I will not talk too much about leadership because I have spoken, but I want to thank the government have been so, I won't say bright, so blunt in telling powers that be what should be done as regards leadership. Because your orders preach on the conscience of the people. And if you have good leaders, you have good fellowship. If you have bad fellowship, you have bad leadership. Because we know the importance of preaching people's conscience, telling them what to do and how to do things. Or Shep Mantan Fodio said, conscience is an open wound. Only truth can lead it. So how can our leaders become truth? Sometimes when we say the truth, as it is, some leaders don't feel so good about it. But we'll continue talking to them and saying the truth in whatever we do, in whatever we say. 
And when we do so, they should take such comments as just advice from people who are so concerned about what happens to the people on my Allah place on their care as leaders. So that you discharge and equip yourself most honorably here from us because Almighty Allah will ask you when you meet him, what did you do with the legend I gave you in the world? And you only, you only must answer. You and you only must answer. Nobody's going to help you to answer any question. So for leaders, I want to urge you to always uphold the truth. Be honest enough, be transparent and be accountable. Because Almighty Allah will ask you. I wish all of us who was blessed and stay in this auditorium and also listen to a very distinguished lecture and lectures and I believe we will benefit and I pray our politicians, so many of them are here, will listen to what Patrick the Mumbai is going to say and take some away from this world to go and use in your campaigns, campaign honestly, campaign like a gentleman and then convince people to vote for you and when you do get the votes Discharge your responsibilities to the best of your ability with the fear of Almighty God because God Almighty Allah what Allah will ask you. So I welcome you all once more the chairman of this program and I pray for a successful outing and send trip back to our various destinations. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The remarks of the distinguished chairman of this occasion, His Eminence Muhammad Salat Abakar, CFR, MNR, the Sultan of Sabato. Can we please give him another resounding applause? And whilst he was on the podium delivering his remarks as distinguished chairman of this occasion, we also received in our midst the former speaker of the House of Representatives, His Excellency the Right Honorable Yakubu Dugar, we'd like to welcome him. We also recognize the presence of Senator Victor Massey, the Chairman Government Board, and during Inland Waterways. We recognize you. Senator Matthew Rogini, the Dosal Chairman, Senate Committee Public Account. We recognize you already. Senator Gilbert Inachi, we'd like to recognize you. We also recognize Senator Solomon Adokwe, and we also recognize the presence of High Chief Aleo Raymond Thomas. We thank you so very much for coming. At this juncture, your excellencies, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'd like us to fix our gaze on the LED screens and plasma screens dotted around this auditorium so we can watch and have a glimpse. Increase, increase the audio, please. 